Thank you so much for being here and doing a virtual uh, career fair for our students. <laughs> Um, my name is Karina Bissett. Uh, I work at St. Martin's University. I'm a graduate assistant in the Career Center. Um, I'm so excited to have you here today. If uh, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the students and tell them a little bit about where you're from. Yes, I'm Kelly Serapanini, and I'm the coordinator of leadership development um, for the Office for Catholic Schools in the Archdiocese of Seattle. Um, I also work for the Fulcrum Foundation, uh, which is in a, a, a a foundation that supports all of the Catholic schools in the Archdiocese. So I have uh, a dual um, work, but uh, uh, all united in, in really supporting uh, teachers and leadership. Wonderful. Um, and can you just tell us a little bit about uh, your district um, and give some insight on that for the students? Yeah, I mean, I'm representing um, the Archdiocese of Seattle, which has 73 schools. So wow. it spans all the way all the, to Bellingham, down to Vancouver, all the way to the coast, and then uh, just uh, west of the mountains. So it's a wide geographic um, range uh, that we should say. And um, we have also high school and elementary schools. There are 11 high schools and the rest are elementary schools. Uh, some are uh, Jesuits, some are independent, some are uh, part of the archdiocese, some are um, uh, you know, small, some are rural, so we're, we have all different kinds of schools in which I'm representing for those 73. Awesome. Um, so I think the first thing that most students will want to know is, can you tell us a little bit about um, what is your normal recruiting, hiring schedule, and process that would be helpful for them to, to know and understand? Uh, well, we would have uh, probably seen you at a fair uh, within <laughs> this next month, uh, but now we're doing this virtually. Um, but we know that Handshake is available. Uh, which you can access all of the, the positions of which we have open. Um, and also it, it goes right into the portal for how you apply. Um, so we begin in March uh, and then hopefully, you know, finalize all of our hires uh, by um, August. Um, the way in which you can apply is you go through this frontline portal, which is on Handshake, and you only have to do one application for all of our schools. But you would have to just, uh, you just can uh, select which schools you would like to apply for specifically or positions you would like to apply for specifically. But once you're in our frontline portal, um, you don't have to do it over and over and over again if you wanted to apply to multiple. That's great. Oh, that makes it so nice for, for going through the application process. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, so what are the qualities you most look for in your new hires? Well, we want somebody that's just, you know, really gung ho about uh, teaching and learning and really wanting to be there for the students. We're very student centered. Um, I was just in a meeting this morning at 730 with all of our principals, uh, you know, talking about our virtual uh, lesson planning. Um, and it was really focused on how are the students doing? How are the students showing and achieving? Um, how are we going to be able to grade them? And um, so the conversation was really geared towards, you know, student achievement, student progress and student wellness, like a holistic uh, approach for students. Um, and we're also very community and collaborative. Um, so we're looking for people that are of that same ilk, um, that are really wanting to stand shoulder to shoulder and share good ideas, good uh, bright practices, you know, that are happening in their schools. Um, and, you know, be connected. Uh, so that, that's, those are the type of people we're looking for. <laughs> Great. Um, what uh, do you look for in application materials? Is there anything specific for resumes, cover letters, any additional um, materials that students should be submitting when they apply? Well, in Frontline, we are looking for a resume um, and a cover letter. Um, and there's no specific requirement what those actually look like, uh, but we would like to have somebody that has, um, you know, a teaching certificate um, if they are looking to teach in our schools. Um, you can be working towards that teaching certificate, um, and even uh, for the archdiocese and with superintendent, you can have a, uh, you know, say we do get back together and are able to go back into our schools, uh, you can have a temporary. Um, as because you're working towards getting that license, you can substitute and work in our schools prior to finalizing all those credentials. So that is oh. a potential. If there is, you know, you're you're on the progress, you're almost there. You're, you know, you can see Mount Everest, and there's the <laughs> the landing point. Um, you can you can work um, in our schools. So I just Great. wanted to put that out there for those that are are in that process. 
That's so good to know because I know a lot of our students are right in that pocket that they're wondering like what's going to happen or am I able to you know if, if I'm not quite done yet then how does that work so that's that's great to know that they can go ahead and apply and kind of yes. get that process started. Good okay good. <laughs> um, so the next question uh, are you looking for someone with any special credential or practical experience? Well, we have, uh, you know, as I said, 73 schools. So we do have everything from a preschool teacher uh, need all the way up through a 12th grade, uh, you know, teacher <laughs> need, um, different sp specific skills. Um, so PE and art and music, um, guidance. Um, so we have the gamut. If you, any, any role within a school is potential uh, to have a position uh, be open. Um, so I would say the, the wide range. Okay, great. Um, so I, I don't know if you'll know this yet, or um, what open positions do you anticipate having this year, or do you anticipate having any, you know, specific jobs or internships possibly? Well, we do have a, a number of openings. Um, on average, we have, you know, with 73 schools and, you know, uh, like 3,000 teaching positions in uh, open <laughs> positions, we have about a little under 100 every year. That's been our average. Um, so we have, and, and they are high school and elementary and preschool. Uh, we have three different pockets uh, of which we have openings um, that people could apply for. Okay, okay. wonderful. We already have a listing and that will be on our front line, which will be in the handshake if they okay. wanted to take a look at that. Okay, great. Um, so how does your district support uh, beginning teachers? Well, we have a really great program called the GRACE program. Um, and it is uh, every school has one to four uh, of these GRACE teacher leaders. So they're teacher leaders in which they've had a number of years of teaching. Um, and they have, uh, they get together uh, three times a year and there are 135 of them. So they range from all those geographic areas. They get together and they do planning on how do we unpack, you know, test scores, how do we mentor new teachers, um, how do we, uh, you know, even support the administration. So they're kind of a hybrid leader in which they have a seat at the table of the administration, but they're also in the classrooms and working with teachers side by side to really, you know, do the best things that are necessary for those students. Um, so the, the GRACE program really has a support built in mentoring program um, that is connected with all 73 schools, um, which is really an awesome way for a new teacher to have, uh, you know, that kind of system to come into. And then there are many opportunities for professional growth, professional development uh, that come with those teacher leaders um, on a almost daily basis, um, which is nice. Oh, great. And do you have examples of like what type of, um, of professional development people have done as, as new teachers? Yes, uh, so we have um, the, we, we work with the University of Washington uh, Center for Educational Leadership, so they have the, the 5D framework, um, so we teach, uh, you know, the, the new teachers, if they have, I mean, it's, it's, some of them have Marzano and, and, you know, different frameworks, but we really help them understand how that framework can really um, have its implications in the classroom, so that would be one level. Two is uh, all of our schools uh, have the NWA map testing. Um, so how do you um, look at those tests to see how your students are faring um, and drill down to look at practical ways in which you as a, you know, a teacher can really improve the teaching and learning that's going on in your classroom. So those are the, I would say, the two big global arms um, that are done. Um, but really just kind of like how you even things like classroom management, um, uh, you know, best practices, those kind of things are shared across this GRACE program with new teachers. Okay, wonderful. Um, so how do teachers and administrators work collaboratively to solve problems and respond to student needs? Well, we, it, we have these, you know, we get together three times a year with the GRACE program and, and principals also come to those uh, two times a year to those meetings so oh, they okay. can hear firsthand um, what is going on. 
um, and how they could support. Um, and there are different structures built in to have those one-on-ones with the teacher leaders, the principals with the teacher leaders on, you know, how are things going with you individually? How are things going in our school? How are things going in the archdiocese? So there's multiple layers uh, of support structures that are built into that program. Um, all of our principals uh, get to get uh, once a month um, for, for meetings uh, so that we can, sh- uh, and some of our teacher leaders come and present uh, at those meetings to just kind of um, demonstrate how we're working and, and, and where the needs are so that we can kind of address those and unpack those. Um, and we have a, a robust set of individuals that are always looking for how do we help uh, social emotional learning? How do we help um, you know, even just math skills specifically. Uh, and so there are, there are professional development opportunities that we see that can benefit multiple schools that we invite um, and offer um, using even title funds or sometimes even free if we can get a, you know, a sponsored uh, professional development endeavor. Um, and FACTS has been our great avenue of, of getting some of those things done for us. Awesome. Um, I think the last big question that students would probably want to know is, uh, what are the prospects for future growth in this community and its schools? Um, maybe if there's, we can touch on, you know, the economic stability of the community. Um, what would be your take on that? Well, we serve such a wide array of schools from Aberdeen to, you know, Bellingham. Uh, there's no two schools that look exactly alike. Um, but the one thing I would say is the strength in the, um, even in this tested time of the coronavirus, is that just the sense of community, the sense of get it done, help it out. Um, you know, we, we had figured out ways in which every single student can be supported technologically. Um, all the families could get some free wireless if they did not have it. Ways in which, you know, uh, meals were being delivered. Um, so I feel, I feel that the community is the, is the, the can-do kind of engine that is helping us in these times. Um, and then we have the, the Fulcrum Foundation that's really supportive of um, our schools. Uh, they have school partnership grants, they have student uh, tuition assistance, uh, which they're, they're really like thinking about how this coronavirus will implicate um, their work in a little different capacity, but they've always been there to really help uh, and support schools. So I feel like the the structures are really in place. And, and since we've been such a, a close district, uh, in times like these, um, those structures have, have really, um, will get us through. Yeah, and that's so comforting for students to be able to hear that of, you know, going into a workforce that they can count on the community and the different structures in place. And so it's, that's nice to share that with them. So thank yeah, you. It's multi-layered, multi-layered, yeah. which is, yeah. Well, and so is there anything that I didn't ask or any um, parting advice that you would like to give to our students as they're starting to, you know, move closer to graduation and start the going through the hiring process? Uh, anything else that you would like to add for them? Well, in Handshake, um, you can request at any time, uh, you know, if you wanted to have a, a conversation with any of our schools. Um, you know, I am one voice, but I, as I said, I was on 7.30 this morning saying, hi, I'm going to do a St. Martin's, uh, you know, virtual interview. <laughs> and they said, well, best of luck. And, and, but then I am, you know, they were all, they're very wanting to, to be connected um, with students that are potentially wanting to work in their schools. And so they open their doors and they, you know, they raise their hand to say, reach out, uh, request us, and, you know, we're available. Um, and they are. Uh, so that if you had specific questions about, you know, the size of the school, uh, the makeup of the school, uh, you know, what the teachers get as far as specific supports, um, they're available. And I, and or I will have my contact information in the handshake. You can reach out to me and I can be the liaison for that. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking your time today to do our, our virtual career fair and, um, and definitely we'll send students your way if they have additional questions. So thank you. Thank you.